Hello and welcome once again, students. This is our fourth lecture in the topic of cash flow statement. I welcome you all once again. And uh, in the topic of cash flow statement, we have had a journey of three lectures so far. In the first lecture, of course, we did the basics of what is cash flow, the theory part of cash flow. In our second lecture, on cash flow, we solved two very simple problems. And in our third lecture, we solved a problem where we had some adjustments, but the, they were very minor adjustments and very, very simple adjustments. So I hope you are understanding this topic and you are following whatever we have done. Okay, whatever we have done so far, I just hope you have understood that. And that is very important, what I have done so far, and you have understand, understood that part. And if that you have understood, then nothing like it. You will understand the remaining. You will understand the further what we are going to do. That also you are going to understand. <clears throat> I hope you have gone through the notes that I have uh, you know, uh, requested the National Council to put up. That is the handout. And again, I want to say in case you cannot get a hold on the handout, please get in touch with me. I'm a faculty at the Institute of Hotel Management, Goa. Get in touch with me. My name is there on the screen as well. Get in touch with me and uh, I will make sure you get those handouts that I had prepared just on these two topics, the, the funds flow and the cash flow statement. But uh, I have sent it to the National Council also and I have requested them to kindly put it up along with these uh, video lectures. <clears throat> I hope you all are doing well and are good. You are studying. <laughs> it's important to study. It's very important to study and um, work hard, work hard. Understand your subject. Um, try to excel in your subject. Try to do well, you know, in your studies. Try to do. You will reap the benefits. You will definitely. Hard work never ever goes waste. It never goes. Waste. Hard work always has a reward. You will get the reward for your hard work. Okay. So uh, let's um, start with our today's lecture. You, you, I hope you all are ready with your notebooks, with the question written down on your notebook, with uh, your cash flow opened up, you know, and um, uh, few ledger accounts opened up and so we will start okay let's see what we have to do today oh well again so i never forget to thank national council and my institute Okay, National Council for giving me this opportunity to interact with you all and uh, my institute for giving me all the support that I need. Okay, for today's lecture, we are going to learn how to prepare a cash flow statement like we did uh, in a previous lecture. We are going to see how to calculate operational profit and loss again because that will be needed for the problem that we are doing today and how to prepare non-current accounts when we are preparing a cash flow. Now here we have certain adjustments and we are going to learn from these adjustments. They are different. <clears throat> okay, so that's what we are going to learn. Let's go to our question for today. <clears throat> And this is question number three. This is question number three that we are solving today. Okay, that's question number three for you. Hmm? Uh, uh, the balance sheet of Glesson Enterprises as on 1st April 2000 and 31st March 2001 were as under. So this is a balance sheet. And in fact, in our in my previous lecture with you, uh, I have um, I have already explained to you a little bit about the problem. But I know it was in the previous lecture and I know sometimes we do carry a very short memory. So let's read the question once again. It is always a good habit. Okay, Even in exams, whenever even exams, when you are answering your exams, try and read 
a question at least two to three times <clears throat> because first time when you're reading or in an exam you are already a little bit nervous and when it is a subject like finance you get all the more scared okay so read a question at least two to three times especially when you have a problem a problem based question read it two to three times only when you read it two to three times does the question actually become clear to you and actually becomes simple also to you first time when you read many times oh my god ye kaise adjustment aa gaya isko kya karna hai kya karna hai? you know sometimes you get scared but uh, when you read it two three times the question becomes very simple so it is always a good habit to read the question so the balance sheet of glesson enterprises as on 1st april 2000 and 31st march 2001 were as under liabilities glesson's capital now the name of the owner is given over here and it is said that it is his capital so what does this indicate i told you in my last lecture and even in the problem that we did the last time it indicates that this business is a sole proprietor it is not a company not a public limited company this is a sole proprietor okay so how you handle a sole proprietor's balance sheet is a little different from how you will handle the accounts of a public limited company because there we have shares and here we have the owner's capital so glesson's capital 222000 and 223500 there is an increase but is this all profit if there is profit how much is the profit we will find out then we have loan from miss celine Uh, so glesson has taken loan from miss celine so it was not there at the beginning of the year but by the end of the year there is 30000 loan so this is cash raised in the business it is cash raised in the business then loan from bank okay there is a reduction there is a reduction which means there is a repayment of loan over here then we have trade creditors <clears throat> trade creditors are nothing but your sundry creditors these are creditors that arose out of the trade that we are doing in business so these are nothing but your creditors and these are your current liabilities you should know what you should do when current liabilities decrease or when uh, current assets decrease i have already told you the rules now come on the asset side we have hotel premises there is an increase then we have freehold land there is an increase then we have kitchen equipment so even kitchen equipment there is an increase but there is an adjustment to kitchen equipment then we have cash in hand this time we shouldn't forget to write the opening balance like i forgot the last time okay cash in hand 6000 and 5400 then stock of goods 37500 and 33000 and we have sundry debts okay so that's about your a balance sheet then um, we have adjustments over here what is your adjustments you are required to prepare a cash flow statement after taking into consideration that first one during the year the owner withdrew rupees 39000 for his personal use now this is a sole proprietor and if there are drawings now this is drawings i have explained in my last lecture this is what is called as drawings when the owner withdraws something from the business for his or her personal use it is called as drawing so here the owner has withdrawn 39000 rupees for his personal use so there is drawings and drawings affects the capital it reduces the capital so we will see how to account for it okay then we have provision for depreciation here there is provision so uh, when we were doing funds flow i have explained to you about provision and what is provision and how provision has to be handled but here this provision is not given in the balance sheet this provision is given as an uh, additional information it is given as an adjustment so provision for depreciation against kitchen equipment as on 1st april 2000 was rupees 40500 so this is the opening balance of provision for depreciation and as on 31st march 2001 rupees 54000 this is the 
closing balance of provision for depreciation okay so uh, you know what is depreciation by now we have dealt with it time and again in funds flow statement so we are not going to spend more time over there okay so this is provision for depreciation it is not uh, kitchen equipment account it is provision for depreciation against kitchen equipment okay it's two different thing kitchen equipment is an asset okay debit balance provision for depreciation is a liability it's a credit balance that's the difference major difference come on let's start solving this problem okay get ready and uh, rule out your uh, necessary ledgers and uh, <clears throat> the cash flow and everything okay come on let's start So we have Glesson's capital account because there is an adjustment. We will first deal with the adjustments and then we will prepare operational profit and loss account and then we shall prepare the cash flow state. Okay, let's first deal with the adjustments. So what's the first adjustment? During the year, the owner withdraws rupees 39,000 for his personal use. So this is the drawings that is there. So let's open Glesson's capital account. And I suggest that you solve this problem along with me. So you open up Glesson's capital account. And capital is a, what is it? Asset or liability? It's a liability, correct. It's a, I hope you answered the correct because I said correct and I, I hope you answered it correctly. Okay, so uh, it is a, a credit balance, okay? all liabilities are a credit balance now what does this mean it means that the opening balance will come on the credit hand side okay so let's write by balance brought down how much is the opening balance of capital 2 lakh 22 thousand okay two lakh twenty two thousand that's the opening balance of capital <clears throat> let's write the closing balance also and and then we are going to do what we have to do okay so that is two <clears throat> two balance carried down to balance carried down is how much? <clears throat> two lakh twenty-three thousand five hundred. Two lakhs twenty-three thousand five hundred. That's the closing balance. So we've put the opening balance and we've put the closing balance. This is the information that we have from the balance sheet. Now look into the adjustment. During the year, the owner withdraws rupees thirty-nine thousand for his personal use. Okay, so. What is the uh, what is the uh, uh, journal entry over here? What is journal entry? When there is drawings, what is journal entry? The journal entry is, come on, when there are drawings, what is the journal entry? Cash is going out of the business and it is drawing. So drawings accounts are always what? Drawings account is debit. Okay, drawings account is debited and we know that this drawings finally uh, reduces the capital okay there are two reasons why capital is reduced one is if there is loss the capital is reduced and the other is by way of drawings the capital is reduced so here we will have to show it on the debit side of capital account because it is reducing the capital account. so two drawings two drawings and how much is that drawings 39,000 39,000 okay so what we have done now is we have in the uh, capital account we have put in the information that is given to us drawings are given we've put in the information opening balance is given we have put in that information closing balance is given we have put in that information now let's 
find out. Let's see which side is heavier and let's see where the balancing amount is coming. And you, see, as you can clearly see that the debit side is heavier. 39,000 plus 223,500. How much that does that come to? 262,500. Come on, at least total. If, if, even if you are not solving this problem with me, keep a calculator with you and start at least totaling up these amounts. Okay, so we write this over here. 262,500. Okay, that's the total on the heavier side total, which you will put on both the sides okay? okay now what is the difference let's find out the balancing amount so 262500 minus 222000 and that is 40000 for sorry 40500 Okay, now this difference balance amount is coming on the credit side of the capital account. Okay, it's coming on the credit side, which means it is the profit for the year. Okay, so we will write by profit and loss account by profit and loss account in bracket. You can write this is the profits for the year now this is the profit for the year so when you prepare this capital account when you prepare the capital account what you are actually finding out is how much is the capital for the year if you just look at the capital if you just look at glesson's capital we can see it is 222000 and it is increased to 223500 and if you know if you just look at the uh, at the balance sheet one can tell that oh there is uh, 1000 1500 increase in capital and so that can be the profit okay so 1500 is the profit no but in reality just 1500 is not the profit the actual profit is 40500 and that is the necessity of opening up these ledger accounts okay otherwise we will uh, you know tend to make mistake and uh, you can think okay yeah chalo drawings hai drawings ko uh, see the hum uh, cash flow mein dikha denge and you don't have to open capital account. No, you have to open capital account. And now you see, if you just look at balance sheet, you will feel 1,500 is the profit. Whereas actually, how much is the profit? 40,500. Okay, so that's the profit we have for the year. Okay, okay, so that's I hope you understood capital account. Now let's go to the next one and that is provision for depreciation on kitchen equipment. Now this is again provision and provisions are always a credit balance. So the opening balance will come on the credit hand side. Okay. How much is the provision for depreciation opening balance? Opening balance on 142,000 was rupees 40,500. So by... By balance brought down is 40,500. Okay. And we will write the closing balance also. To balance carried down. How much is the closing balance? 54,000. 54,000 is the closing balance. So we've put the opening balance and we have put the closing balance okay now what we will do is we will balance it which side is heavier have they given anything about uh, anything else about provision no okay. so which side is heavier the 54000 side is heavier I think I will have to pull this down. So we write that on both the sides, 54,000. So 54,000 is heavier, okay? <clears throat> 
So let's find out the difference amount. Now let's find out the difference amount. 54,000 minus 40,500. How much do you have? 13,500. Okay, that's your balancing amount. Now, what is this 13,500? 13,000, this, the difference between the, um, uh, the uh, opening balance of provision for depreciation and the closing balance of provision for depreciation, the difference amount is the depreciation for the year, okay? The depreciation for the year is 13,500. So you will write by profit and loss. I'm writing P&L account is because in bracket i want to write this is the depreciation amount for the year okay so that is the depreciation on kitchen equipment the depreciation is 13500 and that is the reason why we will open provision for depreciation on kitchen equipment account so from the provision uh, uh, for depreciation on kitchen equipment account what happens is we come to know what is the depreciation for the year for kitchen equipment okay now let's prepare kitchen equipment account okay now why are we going to prepare kitchen equipment account we are going to prepare kitchen equipment account is because there is depreciation on kitchen equipment so if you look into your balance sheet just go and have a look into your balance sheet in the balance sheet kitchen equipment opening balance is 120000 so at the beginning of the year the value of kitchen equipment is 120000 by the end of the year it is 129000 and if we just look at the balance sheet, we can say that there is a purchase of kitchen equipment and 9,000. 9,000 is the purchase of kitchen equipment. But is it really 9,000 purchase of kitchen equipment or is there anything else? So for that, and because there is depreciation, because there is an adjustment that is affecting kitchen equipment, we will open up kitchen equipment account and we will see what it is okay so let's open up kitchen equipment account now kitchen equipment is an asset see provision provision is a liability and so provision uh, is a credit balance so opening balance will come on the credit side but kitchen equipment is an asset and all assets are debit balance so the opening balance will come on the debit side two balance brought down okay what is the opening balance of kitchen equipment one lakh twenty thousand and what we are going to do is we know there is depreciation here see we have found out there is depreciation for the year on kitchen equipment depreciation is thirteen thousand five hundred so let's write that depreciation by depreciation or you can straight write by even uh, profit and loss account because uh, depreciation is always adjusted in profit and loss account okay so by uh, depreciation or you can even write profit and loss account and then you can write in bracket depreciation and how much is the depreciation here we have got here 13500 500 is the depreciation amount there is nothing else so we'll just put the closing balance it is always safer you know to leave one line and then write the closing balance because we don't know whether there's going to be purchase or there's going to be sale okay but i'm writing because <laughs> i know uh, okay so by balance uh carried down and how much is the balance carried down one lakh twenty nine this is the closing balance and now which side is heavier the credit side is heavier so we are going to write the total of the credit side okay so let's total up the credit side and see how much is the total on the credits and one like 29,000 plus 13,500 and how much is that one lakh 42,500 so 
1,42,500. Okay, so that's the total of the credit side and the credit side is heavier. So we are going to write that total here as well. 1,42,500. Okay, 1,42,500. And now let's find out the difference amount. And that is minus 1,42,500 minus 1,20,000. And how much does that come to? 22,500. And this is the balancing amount. Now, which side has the balancing amount come? We have done this even in funds flow. Which side is the balancing amount come? The balancing amount is come on the debit hand side. Kitchen equipment is an asset. Asset is what type of an account? It is a real account. What is the rule of real account? Debit what comes in, credit what goes out. And if the difference balancing amount is come on the debit hand side, it means kitchen equipment is coming in. So it means it is purchase. So two cash account in bracket, you can write purchase okay so you, you know this is exactly what i was telling you why you need to open up kitchen equipment account if you look at the balance sheet i told you beginning of the year it is one like twenty thousand at the end of the year it is one like twenty nine thousand you can say oh we have purchased kitchen equipment worth nine thousand no but for how much how much kitchen equipment has been purchased not nine thousand but twenty two thousand five hundred worth of kitchen equipment have been purchased. And that's the reason why we need to open up these ledgers. Okay, now you understand? Okay, so let's move ahead and let's prepare our funds from operation for the year ending. For the year ending what? 31st March 2001. Okay, 31st March 2001. So let's prepare the operational profit and loss account. Okay, now uh, for operational profit and loss account, what we are going to do is we need the help of the capital account here. We have opened up the capital account now. Okay, and from the capital account, we came to know that the profits for the year is 40,500. Okay, so uh, because we don't have profit and loss account in the uh, balance sheet, and that is the reason why we had to one is because there is an adjustment of drawings, and the other is to find out what is the profit for the year. So profit at the end of the year is how much? How much was that? Profit at the end of the year, the capital account, 40,500. 40,500 is the profit at the end of the year. Now what we do is we are going to add... Add non-operating expenses. So what are the non-operating expenses we have in this problem? Just one. That is depreciation on kitchen equipment. So just one non-operating expense is there. So right here. Depreciation on kitchen equipment okay depreciation on kitchen equipment and how much is the depreciation on kitchen equipment depreciation is 13500 13 
13,500. And we have nothing else in this problem that is going to affect funds from operation. There's no general reserve. There's nothing, nothing. Okay. So there's nothing else. So we'll just take this 13,500, draw a single line behind uh, beneath that and take on the same line, take it in the outer column and draw a single line here as well. Okay, and add it up and write over there. So you get, sorry, okay, 40,500 plus 13,500, 40,500 plus 13,500, you get 54,000. Okay, you get 54,000. Then what do we do next? You know, you know see, uh, there are no non-operating income in this problem. But write, you know, when you write, you have to every time that you are preparing funds flow statement, you know, it's not there. Just don't write directly, make 54,000 your operating profit. Write the entire format, okay? Less. non-operating income okay less non-operating income there is no non-operating income even if it is not there you write and put a dash in that column then less profits at the beginning of the year do we have profits at the beginning of the year no, we don't have profits at the beginning of the year because profit and loss account is not given to us. So we don't have. So if you don't have, you don't have. <laughs> okay, so you write 54,000, whatever is the amount over there, you write that and that becomes your operating profit. Okay, so that becomes your operating profit. I hope you have understood. I hope you have understood how we have opened up capital account. And I hope you have understood uh, why we had to open up provision for, de de provision for depreciation on kitchen equipment account. And then we had to open up kitchen equipment account to find out exactly how much is the purchase. Is the purchase 9,000 uh, 9, as it is reflecting in the balance sheet or is the purchase more than 9,000 or less than 9,000. We don't know until we don't open up that account we will not come to know okay so so far good and so let's prepare the cash flow statement come on if you are uh, if you are solving with me take the time to rule out your cash flow statement okay This is for the year ending 31st March 2001. Okay. Like last time, we are not going to forget writing the opening cash balance. So let's write the opening cash balance. opening balance how much is the opening balance look into your balance sheet and go to the asset side go to cash in hand is six thousand opening balance is six thousand okay so that's your opening balance now come to your balance sheet come to your balance sheet and come to your liabilities side in the liabilities side, we have Glesson's capital. Okay? We have already opened capital account uh, and uh, that profit from the capital account has been taken for calculation of operational profit and loss. So there is nothing that we are going to do with his capital now. Okay, There's no increase, decrease in capital. Drawings are there, but when we will go to the adjustments, we will take care of drawings, not right now. Then we have loan from 
um, Ms. Selim, okay, at the beginning of the year, there was no loan, but by the end of the year, uh, Glesson has taken loan from Ms. Selim. Okay, so what is what happens when you take loan? When you take loan, funds are coming into the business. So it will come on the receipt side. Loan from Ms. Selim. Okay, and how much is that? 30,000. Correct? Yes, 30,000. Okay, what's the next item on the liabilities side? Uh, loan from bank. Okay, uh, there was loan at the beginning of the year. Okay, and how much was that? 45,000. So there was loan at the beginning of the year, but by the end of the year, there is a reduction in the loan, which means you have repaid bank. So it will come under the payment side. So when you are paying off your loan, is cash coming into the business or going out? It is going out. Repayment of bank loan. Repayment of bank loan. And how much is that? Loan 45,000 minus 37,000. 500. So you get 7,500. 7,500 is a repayment of bank loan. Okay, so we've done that. What's the next one? Trade creditors. Creditors. Who are creditors? Creditors are the people whom we have to pay money. Okay, but this has increased. And what did I tell you? When there is an increase in creditors, what does it indicate? We have saved so much of cash, okay? We have saved on so much of cash, but when trade creditors decrease, it means we have paid off these creditors, okay? So here, because it has increased, increase in trade creditors is receipt. So increase in trade creditors. And how much is that? Let's calculate 61,500 minus 54,000. Oh, that's 7,500. So that's 7,500 increase in trade creditors. So all done on the liability side. Now let's go to the asset side. Hotel premises. Hotel premises. There is an increase in hotel premises. How much is hotel premises? And uh, by the end of the year, it is 82,500 and there is no adjustment. So an increase will be considered as purchase of hotel premises. So 82,500 minus 75, yeah, 7,500. So it is purchase. So because when you purchase, cash is going out of the business cash is going out hotel hotel premises i'm going to remove this one s because i don't want one line to go down and how much is that what is the difference uh, it is 7500 again we have got 7000 there are 3 7500s here okay so purchase of hotel Premise is 7,500. The next is freehold land. Oh, <laughs> straight away writing. Okay, let's see what, what is about freehold land. Freehold land at the beginning of the year is 30,000, but by the end of the year, it is 45,000. There is no adjustment indicating anything else. So we can uh, securely understand it as, we can be very safe in acknowledging it as purchase. So purchase means cash is going out of the business. Purchase of uh, freehold land. Okay, purchase of freehold land. Let's see how much is the purchase. Uh, 45,000 minus 30,000, 15,000. Okay, so 15,000 is the 
freehold purchase of freehold land next is kitchen equipment okay now we are not going to look into the balance sheet for kitchen equipment for kitchen equipment we will have to go to the ledger that we prepared for kitchen equipment this is the ledger that we prepared for kitchen equipment and how much is the actual purchase 22500 okay so that's the amount of purchase purchase of okay purchase of kitchen equipment how much was that 22500 22500 kitchen equipment cash we will take last uh, then we have stock of goods okay now what is goods stock of goods goods are your uh, current assets stock of goods are increasing or decreasing it is decreasing when goods decrease it means these have been sold and when we will sell it what comes in cash comes in so it is considered as receipts so decrease in stock okay and how much is that 37500 4500 okay so we have 4500 500 okay what's the next item sundry debtors sundry debtors have increased <laughs> okay sundry debtors have increased probably these goods must have been uh, you know sold not on cash but in credit <laughs> so when there is an increase in uh, current asset we have to take it under payment side okay increase in current increase in debtors debtors is current asset increase in debtors how much is that 57600 minus 52500 so we have how much 5100 okay yeah done then don't forget your adjustments every time you have to go through the adjustment during the year the owner withdraws rupees 39000 for his personal use cash is gone out of the business drawings drawings and how much is that 39000 okay then provision for depreciation account no we have adjusted it we have opened the uh, account and we have adjusted it in the funds from operation from there we came to know what is the uh, depreciation for the year and that has been taken care of in the um, uh, calculation of operational profit and loss what is remaining now the closing balance how much is the closing balance 5400 correct okay come on now total up total up and see whether it is tallying so let's total up and let's see 7500 plus 7500 Plus fifteen thousand plus twenty two five hundred plus five thousand one hundred plus thirty nine thousand plus five thousand four hundred. It comes to one lakh two thousand. One lakh two thousand. Let's see the receipt side. Receipt side of your cash flow. Six thousand plus thirty thousand plus seven thousand five hundred plus four thousand five hundred. Did we miss out anything? Oh, there is a difference. There is a difference of forty-eight thousand. And can you uh, so? No, no, less than that. 
there is a difference there is a difference of 54000 and that okay let's let's just check let's just check okay 1000 we have not written operational profit okay um minus 6000 okay minus 30000 7500 Yes, 54,000 is the difference and that's your operational profit, 54,000. Now it comes to 1 lakh 2,000. And so your fund flow statement problem tallies. Okay, one lakh two thousand and one lakh two thousand. We forgot to write that. I forgot to write that operational profit, but it's good, you know. And the difference is exactly fifty four thousand, and that was a prof operational profit. And that is why you know in funds flow, I used to always write operational profit first and leave it over there. So we can do this, but here you have to write opening balance. So in writing opening balance, I forgot. Uh, operational profit okay but our problem has tallied so i hope uh, you really enjoyed uh, solving this problem okay so what we are going to do is we are going to have a look at the problem that we are going to do in our next lecture let's have a look because that's equally an interesting problem and it's quite different so this is the problem we have solved what i will suggest is again please prepare a funds flow even for your question number three take it as a challenge okay take it as a challenge you know to tally your fund flow statement it's fun okay This is the problem that we are going to prepare in our next lecture. It had come in the year 2003 uh, in your question paper, 2003 question paper, 2003. Now this is 2020, okay? So around how many, 17 years back. Okay, so this was a question that had come, but it's a very interesting problem. There are no adjustments in this problem. And yet the problem has a lot of stuff to do, okay? So it's a very, very interesting problem. And if you just look at the problem, you know what I'm, I want to suggest to you is please study the question. Study the question before we are going to solve it the next time. Look at this question. Look at the way it is even represented. Look at different things that are there. Look at the assets, how depreciation is given. Depreciation of the previous year is also given. Depreciation of this year is also given. So all these values will become very, very confusing to you. So what is this? So you just study the question nicely. And uh, this is a problem that we are going to solve in our next lecture. Okay, so we will, I'm going to stop sharing this now because... I don't like to end on that screen. I like to end on this screen. Okay. So the next question is equally interesting. Very, very interesting. And I wonder sometimes uh, in 2003, how the students must have handled this question, how they must have solved this question. But it's a very interesting question. So I want you to just go through it. Just understand the question. Nothing more. I don't want you to do anything more. Of course, for the question that we have already solved, prepare the funds flow statement and uh, just go through this question hmm? and just understand the question. Kya hai ye depreciation kya hai? Liabilities me kya kya de rakha hai? Assets me kya de rakha hai? Now just understand the question. That will help you a lot. It will help you a lot when we are going to solve this problem. Okay, so I'm going to see you again very soon in the next lecture where we are going to solve this problem. Thank you. Thank you very much.